Today I'm going to be discussing what nobody else is talking about, and that is the details of mortgage rates and what happens to them during recessions. Most of you have probably seen some sort of a graph or heard a conversation from someone involved in real estate stating that mortgage rates decrease during recessions and they just take that information and kind of go about, go along about their day. We're going to look at the nitty gritty details of what's going on during these recessions. We're going to be looking at the last six recessions. I'm specifically going to focus on the recessions that occurred between 1980 and 2020. Let's start off with some context. Here's a graph that I recreated that shows in the last six recessions, mortgage rates have decreased. You can see that in 1980, mortgage rates decreased by 4.25%. 81, they decreased by 5%. 1991, they decreased or decreased by 2.25%. 2001 was a decrease of 0.63%. 2008 decrease in 1.13% and in 2020 the mortgage rates decreased by 1%. Now my initial thought when I saw this stat is that if I were an investor or a home buyer I would want to try to time the market when the recession ended. Because from this graph until you look at the details it looks like mortgage rates start high at the beginning of a recession and they drop in some years considerably by the end of that. And so why wouldn't you want to wait and try to time when the recession ended? In the Federal Reserve's um, comments back in March, they said um, it's anticipated that we'll experience a mild recession starting at the end of 2023 and that it will be a moderately paced recovery over the next two years. This could lead a lot of people who are in the market or who want to be in the market to buy a home to wait until uh, 2025, when potentially they could miss out on two years of potential appreciation, rental income, or living in, or living in their dream home. So let's take a look at those details of what happens with mortgage rates during the past six recessions. The information that I'm gonna share was all gathered from the Freddie Mac website, in addition to an article that was on the Mortgage Specialist website. The links to both of these resources will be in the description. When I started looking at these graphs, I had a thought, how are they measuring this decrease in interest rate? So looking over the past six recessions and looking at the slope of the graph of the mortgage rates, I noticed something interesting that hadn't been discussed. Let's look at 1981 as an example first. On this graph, it shows a peak interest rate of 18% and a low of 13%. So 18 minus 13 is five. So I can see where they get the mortgage rates decreased by 5% during the 1981 recession. If you zoom in a little bit closer, you can actually see that the interest rate does not start at 18% at the beginning of the recession. It actually peaks at 18 somewhere between the beginning and the end. But on this graph, it's hard to tell when they stop measuring or where they get the 13 number. In 1981, it's a continual decreasing slope. So it doesn't really provide a lot of detail other than it looks like they may appear to be measuring at the end of the recession. Let's look at a different year to kind of make some assumptions on how they're actually doing this. So the next year we're going to look at is 2008. So taking a closer look, we can see a line here that says 5% interest rate at the end of the recession. But the graph shows at the lowest point, at least how they're measuring it, the interest rate is 4.875%. And this does not occur at the end, but it occurs in the middle. So from looking at the data in 1981 and comparing that to the data in 2008, it appears that they are measuring the decrease in interest rates across any recession by the peak interest rate 
and also by the lowest interest rate, regardless of whether that is at the beginning of the recession, the middle, or the end. So they're taking the relative maximum and minimum mortgage rates and considering those. And this is why this is an important detail that no one is talking about as far as trying to time the market or if they're of the mindset, well, I'm just gonna wait till this recession ends because that's when interest rates are lowest. Not necessarily. So let's dive deep deeper into each specific year. Let's look at 1980. These graphs are directly pulled from the Freddie Mac website. Anybody can access these. In 1980, the interest rate at the beginning of the recession was 12.85. It peaked at 16.38 and it ended at 12.25. The low interest rate in that time period was 12.18. So what does that mean? How does that correlate to the graph we looked at earlier that showed a 4.25% decrease in interest rates during the 1980 recession? Well, these numbers don't match up exactly. The graph I was referencing earlier didn't actually provide where they got this data. I'm pulling it from the Freddie Mac. It's going to be fairly equivalent. The numbers aren't going to be exact though. So if you look at the, from the start of the recession in 1980 to the end of that, there was really only a decrease in interest rates of 0.6%. Now let's look at the interest rates from the following recessions and see what they are. See how they match up with what was reported in the original bar graph we looked at. In 1981, the interest rate started at 17.3% and ended at 13.77. This was a decrease in 3.36%. 1991, it started at 10.06%. It ended at 9.53%, a drop of 0.53%. Yeah, 2001 started at 7.03%, ended at 6.64%. This was a drop of 0.39% in interest rates. 2008 started at 5.96, ended at 4.91%. This was a drop in 1.05%. And in 2020, it started at 3.29% and it ended at 3.5%, which was actually a 0.21 increase in interest rates. So there's some interesting information we can glean from looking more closely at the timeline of the recessions and the week by week interest rates. Now, can we actually say that there was a 5% drop in mortgage rates in 1980? Yes, we can say that. Is that accurate? It depends. It depends on how you're measuring it. Now, if you consider 1980 and you worried about purchasing home at the beginning of that recession compared to the end, the difference is close to about half a percentage point. That may be significant in some scenarios, and that may be something that you, in your particular goals that you'd set out for yourself, that that would be something that would kind of make you wait to make a home purchase, which is fine. Other people, without looking into the details, may have been discouraged I think it's great that we have this historical data, but it's important that we ask questions about it when we hear people or read information or see graphs that we dive into that a little bit more deeply than simply going off of a headline that reads mortgage rates fall during recessions. Each graph states that this is true but it also depends on how you're measuring that, whether it's from the beginning to the end, from the highest interest rate during the recession to the lowest of that. And these sources do not really tell you what their measure, measuring methodology is. So it makes it more difficult to really get into the nitty gritty details of what's going on. Hopefully the information I've shared today is useful. And next time you hear someone talking about, well, interest rates drop during a recession, and I'm gonna wait to the end of the recession to buy my home.
or to buy an investment property or even think about looking at homes. Now you have a source for them to go to and have them look at the graphs and they can look at that and make a more informed decision. So in summary, we've looked at a lot of graphs today, looked at the past six recessions and what mortgage rates have done during those recessions. Can we answer with a definitive yes or no of that inter do interest rates decrease or have interest rates decreased in the past six recessions? The answer is it depends. So it's going to depend on how you are measuring the drop in interest rates and what your timeline is, whether you're going to start measuring them at the beginning of the recession and your last measurement is going to be at the end, or if you're going to take the highest interest rate during that time and compare that to the lowest interest rate, regardless of whether it's at the beginning or the end. So hopefully with this information, you're able to better make informed decisions about your home buying process. If you have questions about this or want to have a further discussion about these graphs or anything real estate related, please reach out. We're more than happy to do that.